Good evening. My name is Umi, and I'm from Senegal, Africa. And I'd like to introduce myself. I, as I said, I live in Senegal, Africa, and I'd like to tell you something about my country. We have a population of almost 11 million people. The religion in my country is 94% Muslim, 5% Christian, and 1% indigenous beliefs. The adult illiteracy is 54% of men and 28.9% of women. Our government is democracy. Recently, Michelle Ricketts came to our village with a bunch of women from Sisters in Service, and they came all the way from the United States to see us. And they left the capital of Senegal, which is in Dakar, and traveled a small village where I first met them. Michelle and her party left the car on a cool day, driving on narrow paved roads, dodging donkey carts and herds of goats. After about an hour, the driver took a sharp turn and headed out over an expansive plain that stretched out under the scorching sun. They traveled another hour along a bumpy dirt road. The first thing you see as you approach the small village is the sharpened stick goat pens. Pretty sharp too. Michelle said she could not get the words of a Christian woman from Dakar out of her head. The woman told her to please encourage our sisters in the villages. You see, the Senegalese women don't do much. The husbands have all the power. They make all the decisions. We just follow along. As in many Muslim countries, men can have up to four wives and many children. And it's up to the wife to make sure that her children are fed. And uh, if possible, a little bit of education. <coughs> Just to fetch drinking water, we must carry, as you see on my shirt, buckets of water on our heads. And it takes about four hours every day to go get the water. That's a lot. And when Michelle arrived at the village, I was meeting with a small bunch of women and I was sharing the gospel with them. And with the children. You see, twice a week, I need the comfort of the car and I come to this village and share the gospel message. I became a Christian because some foreigners left the comfort of their homes to come to our village and share with us the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am so thankful for God's salvation that I go to the villages where women haven't heard the gospel and I share it with them. Because of great poverty, the village men have to leave the village to go find work. And this means that the women have to struggle to survive with the children. And they do it all alone. The thing that draws them most is prayer. I tell you, they ask me to pray for things such as a woman to have a child, and God answers their prayers. God answers our prayers. One man asked for us to pray for him, for his wife to have a child, and it happened. 
We take prayer very seriously in our village. And they are greatly moved by a God who answers women's prayers because the women feel that they're too lowly for God to answer their prayers. And they're so excited when God does. Muslim women believe that God is too distant to even be approached with a personal problem. And they believe that a marabou who is a leader of a mystical order of Islam is the only one in our country that can communicate with God. But we can tell them that's not true. Because we have seen God answer our prayers. I thank you because of people like you, like people in Sister in Service, the women in Senegal and across North Africa are learning about the gospel of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you and thank you for letting me share with you. God bless you and one day we will meet. You know, things uh, oftentimes uh, don't go exactly the way that uh, we would hope they would. You know, we wish there would have been sound there. But uh, uh, for some reason, that didn't quite occur. But you know, we t tonight we've had, uh, we've had a lot of fun. We have laughed. Uh, and by the way, it just sort of stirred me to talk more about my grandkids. <laughs> Thank you, John and Taylor. And I know Herbie knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, you know, there is a uh, there is a, a serious side to this as well. And of course, this was serious. And uh, you know, I uh, I get the pastor's weekly briefing from Dr. Dobson, and uh, he always has a lot of very good things to say and. Um, has a lot of uh, statistics and uh, one of the things that uh, uh, was in the briefing this week was that uh, the question was asked to evangelicals evangelical Christians Bible believing people like us and uh, the question had to do with uh, do you believe in a hell a literal hell. And do you believe in the devil? That there is a devil. And among the evangelical uh, community, it was about, I think it was 92% said yes. And you know, what you believe about the Bible, because the Bible is very clear that there is a hell, there is a devil. There is also a God, and his name is Jesus Christ. Uh, there are many people in our country today that attend church regularly that do not believe the Bible. That's very sad. It's very sad because it tells me a lot about that individual. Now, you're here and, you know, as I said, we've had a lot of fun. We really enjoyed ourselves. But God holds our lives, and our time in his hands. He really does. From the youngest person here to the oldest person. And it is so. And it's very serious. And if what the Bible says is correct, then only those that have been born of God's Spirit will go to heaven. It's not how long you've attended church. Uh, religious folks don't necessarily go to heaven. Saved, born again people go to heaven. And that's, that's important because you don't get a second chance. 
To be absent of the body is to be present with the Lord. So I want to ask you tonight something that Billy Graham used to ask over and over again. If you were to die tonight, do you know that you would go to heaven? Now, some say that's presumptuous. That is not presumptuous. That's Bible. The Bible says that you can know. These things are written so that you might know that you have eternal life. If you don't know that, let me suggest tonight, tonight, get that straight with God. We have elders here. Be more than happy to pray with anyone. Uh, for those of us that uh, have made that decision some long ago, uh, God is not only able to save, he's able to keep. He will keep you. And so I'm thankful for that, too. So uh, I tell you, the, if the elders would come up here and just stand up front, and I'll, I'll dismiss everyone. If you are in need of prayer for anything, whatever it would be, if it's for your eternal destiny or some other need <clears throat> that you might have, we always consider it a real privilege to pray for people. So uh, would everyone stand, please? <laughs>